In this video, I'm gonna share my story of why calculus was one of the most important courses I've ever taken in my life. And it's not gonna be for the reason you might think. And the reason for why I wanna share this story is because it made such a huge impact in my life in helping me shape who I am today that I thought I'd share it with you to hopefully give you some inspiration. Now, before we get started, do me a favor and give this video a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, and let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, to give you some context of what this calculus class is all about, this was when I was back in high school, right? I went to a public high school called Marquepo High School in Monterey Park, uh, which is near Los Angeles in California. So basically, there's this calculus AP class in my high school. You know, calculus is a math, it's a little bit of a higher level math for a high schooler. And AP stands for advanced placement, meaning it's a college level course that they teach in high school for people who are ready for that. And then uh, at the end of the year, if you get to take this test uh, and it scores you one to five, if you get a five, you're gonna get college credit you know, in university, right? So you can start taking some college courses while you're in high school. I was never really that great at math, so I wasn't really sure what I was doing in this course. Um, the only reason for why I was in it was because the class I had before that, I think it was trigonometry, um, I got a C in that class. And then when I, you know, told my teacher, like, oh, I wanna take regular calculus, he kind of questioned me. He looked at me, he was like, oh, I thought you would be taking calculus AP. And then I went home, I thought about what he said, and I was like, why would he, encouraged me to take calculus AP when I got a C in his class. Um, but maybe he thought I had more potential than I realized. So I went back the next day and then I said, okay, I'm gonna take calculus AP. And so my senior year in high school, I took this course calculus AP. So when I first started taking this course, it was moving a little fast. And so the first test, I think I got a C on it. The second test, I got a D. And then I felt like it was moving really fast. So um, after that, I got an F on a test and then Every test after that is basically F, 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 sometimes a D minus, and then F, 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 F. So by the end of the semester, um, I had a whopping 46% in the class. And I remember it was so bad, like um, at the time, what they did was they would put all our grades on the wall, right? So you have your ID number, and then it has all the grades on all the tests that you've taken. And it would rank you based on who has the highest score and who has the lowest, right? And then every time a test we would take a test, you know, the rankings would change. And so people would try to, you know, climb up the ladder. And for me, I was literally on the bottom of this list, all the way freaking down, 40 some percent. Even the person above me had something way higher. And so it's like, I'm just way, 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 way. I don't even know what I'm doing here, right? And so by the end of the semester, I get an F. I try to talk to my teacher about it. I'm like, hey, um, you think you can round me up, give me a D? She's like, no, you're too far. So I got an F in the course. And then, so I talked to my teacher, I was like, look, this class going too fast. Um, I don't think I can keep up. If I'm just gonna get another F if I you know, take another semester of this. And then I remember when I asked my teacher in that moment, she told me no. She told me that I should stick it through and keep going. And I was just, I was like, come on, man. Like, there's no hope for me. I'm not gonna do it. I just not, it's not gonna work. And she just said, no, you gotta stick it through. Uh, I'm here to support you. You can come after school to do tutoring and like offering a lot of different support, which was actually really uh, admirable of her. And so, but she didn't let me drop the course. So I was like, okay, fine, I don't care. I'll just get another F, whatever. Now the second semester comes around and what my teacher did that was so brilliant, right? Her name is Miss Ling, by the way, she's retired, but she is one of the most impactful teachers that I've had in my life, actually, if you really think about it. So, uh, so what she did that was really smart for the second semester was, she taught everything in the book from the first semester. Second semester was all about how do you actually get a five out of five on that AP test, right? Which is why people take this course in the first place. Because if you understand all the material and you really get it, you're gonna get a five. But um, just because you went through the first semester doesn't mean you can get a five because sometimes you forget or you don't know how to take the test. So she really focused, I, say, I would say about like two months, two solid months, going hard every day about how to get a five on this AP test. What she did that was so smart was that um, she paired us up in groups. So it would be like one smart person, two people in the middle, and then one person who's struggling, which was me, right? And so I was in a group and I really appreciate them looking back on this now, but uh, so every day in class and then once a week, we would practice taking the AP test and we would help each other. And well, I can't really help them because they obviously they know math better than I do, but they're helping me a lot. And so uh, we, as we're practicing for this AP test, what happens is, you know, every week we, we take a mock test, right? We do the whole test um, together and then, you know, we get a score at the end and we see what we would get if we actually took the real one. And first test, I remember I got like a 14%, right? 14% at 100% on the first one. So I'm like, I'm definitely like, 
failing this test, right? Maybe if I'm lucky, I'm gonna get a three out of five and I'm not gonna get a five out of five. And so, uh, but I would just kept going and going and going. And like, what was so interesting was that my teacher had this um, way of motivating everybody to really believe that they can get a five on this test, right? So every day when you come into class, what you have to do is you're like, you just, you just say like, you just walk in, you say five on AP and everyone walks in the door, five on AP, five on AP, right? Because that's just the slogan. Everybody wants to get a five. That's the, that's the goal. And in a way, is it like brainwashing? I wouldn't say it's like brainwashing. It's just like motivation. It's just like uh, motivation through repetition. You're just like, okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And so I said, I'm taking this test week by week. Um, you know, first I get a one out of five and then I start getting twos. And then my team is helping me and everything and I start getting threes. I'm like, what the heck? I'm, I'm understanding this. And then, you know, a week or two goes by, I get a four. And then I remember uh, two weeks before the real test, I finally get my first five out of five on the AP test. And I'm like, wow, what the heck? I got a five on the mock test. And so when the real one comes by, I crush it. I get a five out of five on that AP test. And that was pretty ridiculous, right? Because two months ago, when I first took the first mock test, I got a 14%, a one out of five. And then in two months, I learned the entire curriculum. And then I take the real one and I get a five out of five. You're talking about someone who got an F in the class before to getting the highest score you can get on this test. Ridiculous. And so what I learned from that experience was that, you know, how did I actually do it? And what I've learned is that, you know, the people that I thought were smarter than me or they got better grades than me at the time, they weren't necessarily smarter than me. Of, of course, there are gonna be people that are just talented and they're just brilliant academically. Great, I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about people who are getting like the C's and B's and A minuses. They weren't necessarily that much smarter than me. It was just that they knew how to take the test better than me. And they know how to condition themselves to learn math better than me. I just didn't get that practice so that when I came into this advanced class, I just got crushed because I wasn't used to it. What I found though, is that if I reverse engineered it and I just, you know, understand the problem, understand how, what the end goal is and just like work backwards to figure out like every single step, I could figure it out, right? And so when you do that and then you re repeat it over and over and over and over, like you're taking practices every single day, you start to understand all the mechanics of math and you start thinking like, oh, when you understand the fundamentals, basically any problem somebody gives you, there you can solve it because you've already seen it before. And so that's what I felt like when I took the real test. It was like, I've already done this so many times that whatever they give me on that test, I've already done it in the past test. I've taken already like 10 mock tests and went over them over and over and over. So they cannot surprise me anymore. I know how to do every single type of math problem. And that's just the mentality that I have when I took the test and that's why I got a five. And so why this was so impactful for me was because number one, before I took this course, I was not very confident in myself, just in general, whether it's my academics, my social life, how I look, just all across the board, I was not confident, right? I never thought of myself as, you know, an achiever. And I never, I always felt like I was just okay. I was like kind of in the middle and my life was just gonna be my life for someone who's okay. There was nobody really that pushed me hard or said like, hey, you can do this crazy thing. Like if you believe in yourself, like nobody really did that in my life up until that point. I'm not sure if my teacher knows this or not, but the way she encouraged us, the way she pushed us to realize our potential, that made a significant impact on me. And it's just like, I mean, the only real change that actually happened was how I perceived myself. When I started to believe that, hey, I can actually do this. I can actually put in the work and achieve a five on five, five out of five on AP. I can actually do the thing that I wanna do. And if I just keep working and working and working towards it and finding people to help me, I can really do this, right? And so that's when I really broke out of my barrier and realized like I can go as far as I wanna go. Before this class, if I've never taken it, I would just probably be very regular, right? Like not, not that there's anything wrong with regular, but I'm just saying like, I would probably just go about my day. I don't question things. Don't try to push myself too far and just do things that are comfortable, that I'm comfortable with. But now I'm trying to push myself every single day. And I really give credit to taking this calculus AP class. First of all, for, you know, giving me that F and giving me like a slap in the face and a reality check saying like, hey, actually you're not as good as you think. And number two, giving me the motivation and tools and support to actually um, succeed in this course. And, you know, this has really translated into like university and, and now, right? So for a university, basically, you know, long story short, I went to the school called UC Riverside, you know, very easy to get in and not that special. And then after one year, I got straight A's, transferred to USC, which is very 
difficult to get into and you know graduate with honors at USC University of Southern California now to put this in context from my high school where I was from to get into USC the University of Southern California you would have to be the top 1% in the whole school in your whole class you would have to have 4.0 or even higher than 4.0 to get into University of Southern California that's just how it worked right so my GPA in high school was 3.17 and there's just no way I have a chance. But in the end, after, you know, net net, after all the transferring and all this and that, in the end, right, I graduated from USC with honors. I got a 3.5 GPA, right? And I had to, to even get to that point, it's like it's such a difference from where I started to where I ended up after I graduated completely different person, completely different mindset, completely different ability, completely different confidence in myself to achieve whatever I want to achieve. And so with that mentality, I'm still applying it now to when I graduated from university and started to work at Oracle. Same mindset, you know, when I started to learn sales, just like you can figure it out, you can do it. And then when I decided to, you know, leave Silicon Valley and start my own business and, you know, start this business that's online and be able to travel the world, that's a scary jump as well. And I still had that same mentality. And so all the success that I had in my career, you know, if you were to pinpoint where it kind of started, it was around that time of 17, 18, where uh, my senior year where I took this calculus class. And of course, there were other things that made a big impact on me, but you know, during that age and during that time, that was one of the things that made the most biggest impact when it comes to my belief in myself and my belief that my potential was only limited by my creativity. So no matter where you're at, whether you're, let's say 18 years old like I was, or maybe you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s, or whatever the case is, doesn't matter. The truth is, no matter what you believe you can achieve, you're always right. Meaning that if you're, you believe that your level is over here, then that's your level. If you believe you can achieve something greater, then that's where your level is gonna be too. So you can go as far as you want in life, depending on how much you believe in yourself. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of different circumstances like where you're born and like, you know, what the economic conditions are like in your environment. I, I understand that, right? But that aside, when you really just look at yourself and your potential and what you can do with the cards you were dealt, it's all about how you think about yourself and what you believe is actually possible. I know it sounds very vague. I know it sounds very um, lofty, but you know, for me, that's what made a very big impact in my life. And that's just believing I can do something. Because the truth is, if you don't believe you can do something, you never do it. So I think believing is the start, you know, it's the foundation. And then once you believe in yourself, you know you can do it, then you can start putting in the more practical things to make that dream a reality. And so that's it. That's my story of how calculus was one of the most important courses I've ever taken. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Let me know in the comments if you know you resonate with this video at all, if you want me to share these kind of stories, because if you enjoy it, I'll be happy to you know create more videos like this in the future. But that's it, my name is Patrick Deng, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.